Hi, girls and boys. Welcome back to the Parsha Studio. In honor of Parsha's bite, we are going to make a cookie treasure chest. Soon we'll find out how this is connected to the Parsha. Here are the supplies which we will need. A mixing bowl, a wooden spoon, a bunch of measuring cups and spoons, one cup, a half a cup, a third of a cup, a tablespoon, a teaspoon, and a half a teaspoon. We will also need two small Ziploc bags, two rectangular shaped cookie cutters, one larger than the other, a rolling pin, yellow food coloring, sprinkles, edible pearls, and gold coins. Two bowls, and not shown here, but we will also need a cookie sheet and parchment paper. We will also need flour, sugar, oil, salt, powdered sugar, eggs, vanilla extract, lemon juice, and not shown here, but we will also need baking powder. Preheat the oven to 350. Ask an adult for help if you have never done this before. Let's start with making the cookie dough. Make sure to wash your hands first. Begin by measuring out two thirds of a cup of sugar and a half a cup of oil. Add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Next, crack each of the eggs, making sure to check each one for blood spots. If all looks clear, dump them into the bowl. Using the wooden spoon, stir the mixture, combining all the ingredients super well. Anyone know why we are making a treasure chest? Well, in Parsha's Bay, Hashem unleashed the last three Makkahs on Mitzrayim. The second to last one was Chayshah, darkness. Hashem specifically made it dark for the Mitzrayim and light for the Yidin so that they could locate all of the gold and treasures of Mitzrayim undisturbed. Measure out two and a half cups of flour and pour them into the bowl. Next, measure and add two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Do you know that baking powder is a secret agent? I'll tell you a type of agent. It's called a leavening agent, which means its job is to cause the mixture to rise and be a little bit fluffy. Use the wooden spoon for as long as you can to mix the dough. Once it becomes too thick, you can use your hands. Just make sure you have washed them or put on gloves. Disposable ones, of course. We don't mean that you should get geared up right now with winter gloves. Now that the dough is ready, we are going to roll it out and get these cookies going. Roll out a piece of dough until it is about a quarter of an inch thick. Not too thick and not too thin. If you're not sure how thick that is, you can grab a ruler for reference or ask an adult to show you. Use the larger rectangle shaped cookie cutter to create four rectangles. In two of them, use the smaller cookie cutter to punch out a rectangle shape which will be taken out. Lay the cookies on a piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet. This treasure hunt that went on during Makas Chayshech wasn't a game. It was the completion of Hashem's promise to Avram Avinu 400 years before Yitzhak Mitzrayim. At the Bris Ben Habasarim, Hashem told Avram about the upcoming Gullus that his children and grandchildren would have to go through. But he promised that when the Yidin would leave Mitzrayim, they would leave with great wealth. With the help of an adult, put the cookies in the oven to bake for about 10 minutes or until they turn golden brown on the edges. Meanwhile, we will prepare the icing. We will make two colors, white and yellow, one in one bowl and one in the other. Measure three teaspoons of powdered sugar and one teaspoon of lemon juice into each cup. Stir each of the mixtures. Add a couple of drops of yellow food coloring to one of them, then mix until all of the icing is yellow. Pour or spoon the white icing into one Ziploc bag, tie it, and cut off a very, very tiny bit of the corner. Do the same with the yellow icing. So about that promise, finally, in this Parsha, the time came for this promise to be fulfilled. By instructing the Yidin to search for the treasures of Mitzrayim, Hashem was honoring his word and keeping his promise to Avram, ensuring they would take the treasures with them on their way out of Egypt. We can learn from this to be careful with and honor our words, making sure that we keep to what we say and not to say anything we don't mean. Can you think of a time when you said something and made sure to keep your word? When the cookies are ready, let them cool. Take one of the full rectangle cookies and flip it over. Squeeze white icing around the perimeter. This icing is going to act like glue, since next, we will attach one of the open rectangles on top. Next, apply more white icing around the perimeter of the top cookie and place the other cookie with a hole on top. 
We have now built most of our cookie treasure chest. Now we are ready to fill it with some delicious edible treasures. Pour some of the pearls, gold coins, and sprinkles inside. Now we have to put the cover on the chest, or else it wouldn't be a real treasure chest, right? This time, just apply one line of white icing across one edge of the top cookie. This line is going to be the hinges of our chest. How long do you think these hinges will last before they need to be oiled? To make this look like a convincing treasure chest, we need to add more features. Use the yellow icing to draw lines around the edges of the cover, then add a couple more lines down the middle and an additional line across either end. You can add some more drizzles on the front, which will be like the pretend padlock that keeps your chest tightly shut. But you can get creative and feel free to decorate your cookie treasure chest however you like. Place some of the edible gold coins on the corners and in other strategic places. These will be the bolts keeping the chest together. Looks pretty convincing, huh? I would almost be afraid to eat up a chest full of so many valuable items. Imagine if real gems were edible, would that be wild or what? But between me and you, we know these gems are not real and are meant to be eaten. Enjoy your treasures, and don't forget to make a bracha. See you next week at our Parsha studio.